All right. I welcome everybody. Uh, as the slide suggests, today we're going to talk about getting moving at home. So a guide to body weight exercise. Certainly as a result of the last uh, couple of years, we've all had to be very creative with what um, our exercise regimes look like. And, and for that reason, we thought this would be great timing. Um, as we've, we've, some of us have mastered what that looks like, coming up with our own workouts as a result of our gyms being closed or our favorite classes not operating. Um, so this presentation today uh, will hopefully augment what you've already had to work through uh, and give you some other ideas or help keep you motivated or remind you of all the, the great work that you've done or maybe consider something that up until now you haven't considered. So thanks for joining us. And without further ado, here we go. So today we're going to um, we're going to talk a lot about fitness literacy, goal setting, and motivation. Uh, as a reminder, health promotion we have four content areas. One of which is physical activity and injury reduction, um, and active living. Uh, if it falls into that. So today, a lot of our content will be shared with you from that portfolio. Um, and as the slide indicates, we're going to talk about some guidance for safe exercise while training at home, um, some changes for intensity levels where you can focus on maybe only working with minimal equipment. For some of you, you may have only access to body weight, trails maybe around your neighborhood, maybe you have some hand weights, maybe you have an exercise ball, a yoga mat, all things that are easily purchased uh, for relatively low cost, but certainly we always want to default to um, our, our, our gyms that are part of the CAF community. Um, and as we safely reopen and return to what regime we were working through prior to all of this, uh, also using our resources um, that are available to you through those channels. So just a couple quick definitions. The first one, um, we talked about this when we launched the wellness equation workshop, but this one just reminds us that exercise is a physical activity. And you'll see, as the slide says, done for a certain time, certain length of time, certain intensity. Important to recognize the differences between some of these words, because a lot of us exercise, but not a lot of us or some of us don't exercise with a purpose to maintain or improve our fitness level. So we will talk a little bit about that today. Uh, physical fitness, as the slide suggests, the capacity of the heart, the blood vessels, the lungs and the muscles to function at a high level. And, and it, it really, it, it is, um, it's something that our body needs. And um, we are very fortunate to be part of a workplace environment, national defense uh, that uh, embraces and is a huge proponent of physical fitness in some cases. It's a bona fide occupational requirement for our military personnel, but certainly for our military community. Um, we can avail ourselves of many of the services and resources available. Um, that can help us meet these needs. So physical fitness, that's the second definition. Sorry, just moving through, there we go. The third slide talks about benefits. So in this regard, and sorry, I'm just playing around with my screen for a second. Um, in it, this slide reminds us of the health benefits and the benefits that will improve our so psychosocial health. So Again, I'm going to loop back to health promotion and our content areas. Um, one of our content areas is uh, injury reduction, active living, physical fitness. Another one of our content areas is social wellness. And this is a great opportunity to be reminded of the link between mental and physical. So you're going to see that we're talking a lot about the benefits of regular exercise, but we can't do that in isolation without being reminded of the benefits to improve our overall psychosocial health. So this slide reminds us that sedentary behavior is certainly a concern for our population. Um, and if we can replace that with physical activity and light physical activity from a moderate to vigorous physical activity, um, that that can provide to us greater health benefits. You'll notice the box in screen, the, sorry, you'll notice the box in green um, highlights what some of those health benefits are. And um, I'll let you read those uh, for yourself and maybe pay attention here to the benefits that improve our psychosocial health. 
So anxiety levels can be lowered. Depression uh, as a benefit to improve uh, the uh, symptoms of depression. Dementia, our, our cognitive abilities, and, and ultimately uh, an improvement of our overall quality of life. So lots of great reasons uh, to maintain regular exercise. Uh, this next slide reminds us of the exercise process. So a lot of the times, and, and we've certainly seen this here uh, at Eight Wing Trenton, across the country at our, our bases, and then internationally, of course, as well, we've seen a lot of people have to um, fend for themselves with regards to what their exercise regime looks like. Uh, you know, in some cases, what we were able to do may have been a walk, maybe it was a family walk, maybe it was getting the dog out for a walk, um, maybe we live close by the trails uh, where it could be more of a hike, or um, in some cases people were running for their maintenance of fitness throughout uh, the last 18 months. Uh, but this slide reminds us that, it's, that, it, that it can be broken down into various phases of our exercise um, uh, elements. So when we are embarking on a cardiovascular program, for example, let's say we, we've decided we wanna do a 3K walk. Um, we absolutely are reminded that the warm up is really important, that um, we're going to want uh, probably five to 10, 15 to 20 minutes of a sports specific warm up. And it's known as per our injury prevention portfolio to decrease injuries by about 40% if we include the warm up into our regime. So, certainly, if you go out for a walk, you're not going to get to your um, uh, high intensity uh, pace within the first few minutes, you're going to allow your body to adjust to that. And that could be the same for a walk as it would be for a class. Maybe you subscribe to an online app and you're able to do classes at home in the comfort of your home. Uh, you will always see the warm up um, element uh, as, as being a very important part of your, your fitness uh, um, session. The next uh, part of the process is the exercise part, whether that's cardio strength, flexibility, um, the, the guidelines from our governing bodies, and that's Health Canada, that's Canadian Society of Exercise Phys, that's National Defense, that's the Surgeon General's content. That exercise element obviously could include many different uh, variety of movement patterns. Uh, and you'll see that it, it talks a lot about making sure you've got some direction changing, some routine landings, incorporate all sorts of movements that are mimicking functional behavior. So why would I include direction change exercises when I'm considering what my regime for fitness is going to look like? Well, some of the highest risks for injuries happen when we're off balance or we have to change direction quite quickly. So we're trying to mimic functional behavior so that we can prevent um, the potential for an injury. That exercise portion, um, that, can be, that can be different from, for all individuals, any fitness level, any age. Some people are, are training 30 to 60 minutes a day. Some people are training 90 minutes a day. Some people are happy just to get out for 10 or 15 minutes at a time. Uh, so that portion of the exercise is entirely up to the individual. The next part of the process is the cool down. And you probably at various times of your life have not paid too much attention to cool down. Usually when you're in a group fitness or an instructor led class, all of this is looked after for us. So this slide in fact, um, reminds us that if someone else isn't looking out for us with this regard, then we should probably uh, consider how important this element is. So it's gonna last probably at least five minutes and we're trying to bring our heart rate, the intensity levels back to where they were before the workout. And most likely it'll be something low impact. Uh, the next element, we can't forget nutrition. So we are proponents of Candace Food Guide. That is the messaging with National Defense that there's something there for everybody to, um, to benefit from by following a sound nutrition plan. And obviously that looks like vegetables, fruits, proteins, carbohydrates. The food guide is there to avail yourself of all the information. And, and as you probably know, there was a rewrite in the last few years. So lots of great new information um, that also touches on the importance of the, 
the socialization piece with, with whatever nutrition is for us, obviously it's fuel, it's energy, uh, but it's a lot of other things as well. So I encourage you to source out your Candace Food Guide. And then the last element, when we look at this overall process of exercise, we do have to consider hydration. In many cases, um, our population walks around in a dehydrated state. By the time you actually feel thirsty, uh, they say there's probably a dehydration percentage happening. So making sure that that is something that you um, consider. So we're gonna talk about some strategies for your physical activity. Um, and we're gonna talk a lot about the principles of fitness. So our governing bodies have helped guide us through this and we use that as a resource. Um, we'll be talking about various principles. Uh, so for example, uh, you'll see in bullet three, it talks about if you're changing your activity or your technique, do it progressively. Well, that's one of the many principles of fitness called the principle of progression. So like anything, you've probably tried um, something new, whether it's uh, a nutrition plan or whether it's a workout, um, you, you basically are going to progress through that. So you wouldn't wake up tomorrow and say, I'm going to start running 10 kilometers. You would do that with progression in mind and you would follow uh, uh, the principle of progression to achieve that success. So we want to remind people of all the equipment options that are available. Today, I was talking to my colleagues um, at the, the gym, and this is, this is what we are seeing across the country, that, that people have found home fitness options, and that our gyms, in fact, are not as busy as we'd like to think they could or should be at this point um, as we start to reopen. Uh, but the reality is, is that with or without the gym, and for today's presentation, we're going to consider the options without the access to the gym. Uh, there are some means, um, hopefully, that are available to us that could, that could set up a very easy home gym. So obviously an exercise mat. And again, sorry, we don't want any of this to be cost prohibitive. Um, we've looked at ways that will mimic what we could get at what we're used to at our, our large facilities, but we've looked at ways to mimic that with home use options that are not cost prohibitive. So an exercise mat um, that can range anywhere between 10 and $40. Uh, certainly in this case, the slide indicates a yoga, uh, a yoga type mat, which is extremely versatile. You'll also see skipping rope as an option. So you don't necessarily need a treadmill, but if you have a skipping rope, there's lots of things and online options to help guide you through a cardiovascular routine with a skipping rope. You're going to see bands, kettlebells and dumbbells. So yes, we did see a spike in the sales of all of this equipment, but it has slowed down. So all of this is available to us from our local um, uh, stores. The bands certainly provide that resistance to enhance uh, musculature and then kettlebells and dumbbells, uh, extremely popular for home use purposes uh, because you can, uh, with very little weight, still maximize your uh, exercise options by having a few of those things on hand. We will talk about footwear, part of our injury reduction portfolio. We make sure people are aware of, of the equipment that we use as a preventative measure. So certainly when we look at repetitive strain injuries and we look at people that do the same thing over and over and over and over again, same muscle recruitment, same planting of foot placement, um, we are going to want to encourage people to make sure that they are set up properly with the appropriate personal equipment uh, to help enhance the enjoyment of your workout so that you're not maybe getting blisters or, uh, you know, the shoe fits properly, um, that it is the right shoe for the right sport. Um, all of those things are to be considered. And perhaps the most popular piece of exercise equipment and really not that expensive, an exercise ball can range from 10 to to $30. It can actually double as an exercise bench. So you'll see in every gym, flat benches are super popular. There's usually a lineup uh, at the incline or flat benches because people will use their hand weights, head to them. And now without needing access to the machines, uh, they can complete all of their workout regime on an exercise ball. So this is probably one of the most useful pieces of equipment 
um, because it does mimic a very sturdy piece of equipment uh, that typically we find at the gym. And in addition to that, it provides some instability, which we know when we look at our workout regime and exercise ball um, that provides some instability will now recruit more muscles than say uh, a piece of equipment that you would typically find at the gym. So equipment options are five to consider there, uh, but certainly there's probably lots of other ones that um, you know of or you perhaps have tried. Uh, we just encourage you to uh, maybe be reminded in this case that um, it doesn't have to be the full, fully stocked gym that, that helps you through your workouts, that in fact, you can do that quite easily at home. The one thing that is not on this slide is just perhaps in the absence of anything at all, there are lots of online programs and apps that just use body weight. So, you know, working through a strength session by just using your own body weight. And then of course that doesn't require the equipment listed on this slide. Okay, this next slide reminds us of the do's and don'ts. And this we could probably link back to the principles of fitness. So we absolutely want people to recognize the importance of smart goal setting. And that is truly goals that are smart, but it also follows that acronym of specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time oriented. So take, for example, that whole 10K example that I just brought up, that I'm not going to wake up tomorrow and decide I'm going to start running 10Ks. That wouldn't be a smart goal. A smart goal might be that I wake up tomorrow, decide I'd like to get into running again, and perhaps I do a walk run. Maybe I walk for a minute, run for a minute, and maybe I do that for a period of or a distance of certain kilometers that is smart, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-oriented. We want to make sure people don't start too fast and we don't want them to train too hard because in sorry about the typo there it should be trained too hard. Uh, we don't want uh, people to um, ruin, ruin the potential for success by coming out of the, the blocks too quickly. And in, in some cases we hear statistically, well, we do hear statistically um, that lots of people suffer through an injury because they went with too much too quickly. We follow the principle of progression and that's the rule of 10. So in increments of 10%, that is what we're hoping that people are following. So let's say, let's say just from a step perspective, let's say I, I wear a pedometer or my Apple watch tracks my steps. And let's say I'm just checking in daily to see what I'm getting. And maybe I'm realizing that most days I'm only getting about seven or 8,000 steps and I really wanna hit 12,000 because that's linked to weight management, weight loss. Um, in that case, I need to add 5,000 steps if I'm sitting at around 7,000 a day. The principle of progression would say the 10% rule, I'm only going to add about seven, 800 steps a day if I wanna progress safely to my goal. So that would be just an example. We don't want people to train the same muscles day after day. And we see this, we see this all the time in the gyms. We see people come in and they do the same thing over and over and over again. And we have a portfolio in injury reduction that reminds us that the repetitive strain injuries we are seeing in a lot of cases are just by people who aren't maybe aware of the benefits of pacing and taking a break from certain muscle groups. We do want to alternate high, low impact training days. So making sure that, you know, we, we hear a lot about the success that runners have with their fitness level, but then we also hear about the injury potential. So we are always encouraging our proponents of people taking a, a day off and, and certainly alternating. Maybe they're a runner, but maybe every second day they could be doing that running or sorry, walking, or if they have access to a pool, doing water running. So it becomes more of a low impact approach. And then the don't uh, comment at the bottom of this slide talks about avoiding negative self-talk and comparing yourself to others. So we do have that social wellness portfolio that we're often reminded in health promotion uh, that it's so important to link the mental and the physical fitness. And when we look at the mental fitness piece here, positive self-talk is what we're um, uh, pushing for. We, we want to avoid negative self-talk. Okay, this next slide 
refers to one of our governing bodies that we use right across the CAF, and that's the Canadian Society of Exercise Phys, so CSEP Activity Guidelines. Um, that particular governing body reminds us that we should absolutely replace sedentary behavior with more physical activity. You probably have heard the, um, the buzz term of sitting is the new smoking. So lots of studies have been done to our population health that in fact have indicated that we're sitting too much as a population and that's as hazardous to us as smoking. So our governing bodies have made sure to get the messaging out there uh, about moving more. And we are looking for approximately 150 minutes a week. Now this can vary, give or take, but we are definitely looking at um, people trying to achieve 30 minutes a day of exercise. In some cases, it could be 30 to 60. Uh, we also understand that people have to start somewhere when we look at the principle of progression um, and, and the principle of adaptation as our bodies have to adapt to, uh, to the overload we are presenting. Uh, but, but being reminded on this slide that there are activity guidelines and it is research-based and it is also statistically based on the population health concerns that we're seeing as a result of our sedentary behavior. And there's nothing like the pandemic to, um, to really push us in the direction of sedentary uh, that just right now provides us with an opportunity to sit up and take note and see where we might be able to make some changes. So you'll see uh, to the right of the slide, it talks about moving more. Um, and absolutely the physical activity, uh, making sure the, um, that we are reducing our sedentary time and um, sleeping well. So along the same lines of the guidelines we've received about sedentary lifestyles, we're also recognizing that sleep is an issue. And for our calf population, uh, sleep is so much of an issue that it's part of our balance strategy and a performance indicator that, that you know, bases across the world are placing emphasis on making sure that our personnel are sleeping well, as certainly as it relates to our occupational health, but in this case, as it relates to our physical and our mental health. So here are some of the guidelines that came as a result of the statistics that our governing body generated for us. So what we're looking here is, and I, I talked about it, I touched on that 150 minutes per week, um, moderate to vigorous aerobic physical activity, uh, and that accumulation piece can be around the 150 minute mark. And certainly if you're not there yet, that's the goal. And if you are there, there's no harm in increasing that. Uh, but you will still follow the guidelines of rest uh, and the guidelines of sleep. So you're also going to see on this slide that, yes, we talk a lot about cardiovascular fitness. We talk a lot about the importance of our aerobic physical activity. So training our heart as a muscle. We also want to put lots of emphasis on muscular strengthening activities, and those should be done at least two times per week. So now, if you take a look at having no access to a gym and the purposes for today's presentation, um, you know, I could be doing a walk, uh, a three to five K walk, for example, and maybe every 500 meters, I stop and I do some squats or some lunges. Um, maybe there's a trail close by that actually has exercise equipment outdoors set up. So there would be a way to incorporate a muscular strengthening activity into something you're already doing outdoors without even having to worry about access to a gym or your home set up. And then you're going to see that um, we, we take a look at uh, all the various intensities of physical activity. Um, and we do want to make sure that um, we recognize the benefit from whatever you're doing and the goal of maybe working to achieve more if that's something that you would like to see. Uh, limiting our sedentary time to eight hours or less. Uh, luckily, we all seem to be connected now some way either to a phone or a watch that tells us about our screen time. It tells us to stand up if we're wearing an Apple watch. Um, the, the reality is, is that staying seated at our desk is, is never a good thing. The great news is corporately, we tend to have more stand up stations in the workplace. 
Um, and we have a Ministry of Labor that makes sure we enforce the pace breaks throughout the day. And for this reason, sedentary time throughout the workday is not productive to our cognitive skill. So even more so, we'll be better employees, we'll be better um, family members if we if we keep moving and we don't stay sedentary uh, cognitively, but also certainly for the health benefits of that. Um, the sleep, the last little bullet there talks about seven to nine hours of good quality sleep. So I was wondering right now if we could move to the chat for a second. Um, and I just want to make sure that I'm uh, addressing some of the questions, but I wanted to ask on the sleep, is anybody willing or interested in sharing if that works well for them or if that's an area that they need improvement on? So the guidelines, when we look at our governing bodies, um, suggest seven to nine hours. So I've got the chat open now. Please feel free to, um, to join in uh, in a, a bit of an interactive portion on how people are doing with uh, their, their sleep. Is that an area? Now you're certainly welcome to, to type into the chat or if you feel more comfortable, you could turn on your microphone and join us that way too. Thank you, Amanda. Uh, yes, anybody who has a new puppy knows that that means uh, the displacement of personal time. Uh, so certainly that will also impact what sleep looks like. Anybody else who in fact wants to share whether sleep is something? Ah, good. Um, seven and a half hours generally, uh, problems with sleep within the calf. Yes, absolutely. So um, a couple of years ago, we launched the Balance Strategy, which was an initiative uh, around the population health within our defense communities. And for the military personnel, we recognized how important it was, whether it's a shift work concern, whether it's the high op tempo concern, uh, whether it's the uh, work life balance concern, whether it's the operational stress, but certainly as a population, we do recognize that sleep is something we should be placing more emphasis on. So thank you for sharing that. Um, so that is the suggestion that in fact, we, um, work towards seven to nine hours of good quality sleep. And obviously we see some success with the consistent bedtime and wake up times. Um, and in some cases it's easier said than done, but if it's shift work that you're dealing with, uh, obviously it's, it's kind of like, um, uh, I'll, I'll liken it to cardiovascular disease. If you have a genetic predisposition to cardiovascular disease, that's not something you can control. However, what you can control are all the other risk factors for um, developing cardiovascular disease. So in this case, if your work is part of the problem or barrier to you getting uh, a good night's sleep, that might not be something you can change. However, there are many other things that you could visit uh, as far as enhancing uh, your sedentary time, your active time, and your sleep patterns, or we call that sleep hygiene. The great news is the CAF is um, putting a lot of emphasis on this right now. So there's lots of information out there available to us. And, and we are seeing a real energy shift into the importance of this concept of sleep as it relates to occupational uh, and operational tempos and uh, and, and ability to have success daily. Okay, so the next slide talks about some examples of home exercises. So I talked about body weight exercises. TRX is a piece of equipment um, that we've seen a lot of CAF members have success with, certainly on deployments, maybe for their home gyms, um, but basically a pulley system that in fact uh, can connect anywhere. Um, and it can mimic some of the selectorized equipment or the universal equipment that we see at the gym. Uh, so I encourage you, if that's something you're interested in, not a super inexpensive option, but very versatile. Um, other home exercises for consideration, treadmills, outdoor runs and walks, strength training. So either with body weight, hand weights, 
like barbells, resistibands, tubes, you name it. There's lots of stuff available uh, at a lot of uh, department stores in your community. Um, and certainly they vary in price. And if you can find a fitness store uh, that specializes in certain equipment, then you're also gonna be uh, availing yourself to other options. Balance and core training. So home exercises that might include that. Certainly there's lots of online apps that can help you through that, but the exercise ball in itself, if I were to have a seat on an exercise ball and I was to do an overhead shoulder press, the very essence that I'm on an unstable surface that's moving around as I try to move through a shoulder press is going to now recruit far more than that muscle, just the, the deltoid. So in that case, I'm gonna to have to engage my core because I could be you know, sliding around right, left, forward or back on the ball. Uh, so balance and core training, extremely important, but also really easily achieved with an exercise ball. Um, the HIIT training, that high intensity training, that's very popular and there's lots of apps and online options for that. So just working your heart as a muscle uh, to increase the intensity um, uh, and to do that repetitively so that you train your muscle not only uh, to recover, uh, but also to work out at a, at a higher intensity. So in that case, you're really looking at the training, not only of, of your uh, muscles, your functional muscles, but certainly your heart is a muscle. Circuit training, also a great thing to do, perhaps even in your yard and your driveway. Uh, maybe if you have a home gym set up, um, you could have four or five stations that you just move through, or you could have four or five exercises written on a little dry erase board in your home gym, and you're gonna cycle through those or circuit through those um, to create a bit of variety and to shake it up a bit, to mimic what you might see in a group fitness class, but also to allow for a bit of a pace break from one exercise to the next. Cycling, the great news uh, is that everybody, oh, oh, well, I shouldn't say that, uh, everybody has ridden a bike before, and now we know the benefits to cycling and exercise, whether that be a stationary bike at home, whether that's finding a trail in your community, whether that's a spin class um, online or at the gym. Uh, but certainly we are seeing more people buy those stationary bikes for home, and there's so much out there available to you to actually have, um, say, a group class or group fitness type feel uh, in the comfort of your home. And you can probably think of some of the big names that have had success with that. Um, certainly Peloton comes to mind. So does Beachbody, um, the Les Mills, there's all sorts of, and so do our own PSP staff with the dfit.ca. So if you're looking at home exercises, the great news is that PSP across the world has considered the uh, virtual presentation of some of these classes, circuit training, cycling, uh, but there are also lots of other apps available <clears throat> to us. The last bullet on this slide is yoga <clears throat> and something that certainly has continued to increase in popularity, excuse me. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Um, so yoga, as you know, is certainly a flexibility exercise, but in fact, it's also uh, very much a muscular workout as well. And again, back to the mental and physical intersection of our fitness, that is something for consideration. Next slide. So <clears throat> this slide reminds us of just a sample workout regime. So what I'm going to do here is just talk about the frequency, the FIT. You'll see the heading that says FIT, and that stands for this acronym, <clears throat> Frequency, Intensity, Time, and Type. So the frequency typically, again, looking to our governing body, is a three to five times per week suggestion. The intensity, when we look at heart rate max, is in around 60 to 80%. The time we're encouraging people to work out for 20 to 60 minutes. And in this case, the example is a cardiovascular aerobic exercise. You're going to see that the cardio should be something that's your choice. So I'm gonna go back to the chat here. I'm going to ask you as an example, what your 
your fit approach is, your frequency, intensity, time type. And if you wouldn't mind sharing uh, some of your examples and, uh, and we'll go from there. So back to the chat. I'll just give you a minute. And would anybody like to offer up in the chat? Oh, perfect, here it comes. Thank you. So here's one example, um, three to five times a week, higher intensity with a focus on endurance. So high repetitions with a lower load and good news, functional training. So when we hear that term functional training, that is considering the exercises we're doing as they compare or mimic to the ways in which we use our muscles uh, in daily life. <clears throat> so very much a buzzword and very important to consider the functional training piece. Um, used to run five times a week, has decreased since moving, uh, but absolutely the fit principle there um, on running five times a week frequency, that's a very high intensity. The type is running. So that um, is one of the most challenging intensities for a workout. And uh, five times a week would probably depend on how long you're going. But in some cases, anywhere between three and 10K is going to take you probably 20 to 60, 70 minutes. Um, so great. Uh, <laughs> A uh, great example of one sample exercise regime. Um, we also have people suggesting that cardio, okay, so this is a great point, that some people are uh, realizing that cardio might not be their thing, or maybe they're not great at cardio and strength is where they're putting their energy. That's really important. Uh, the statistics uh, on, on fitness research would suggest that that you tend to be one or the other. You tend to sort of decide you're gonna be, you know, hardcore cardio or you're gonna be a strength person. And, and so you're in great company. I wanna, as you, as you suggest that, because that is uh, uh, very much we're seeing in the industry, that, that that would be a great area for consideration that, you know, if we've got the strength training down, maybe start to look at how we can add in um, some cardiovascular time. Uh, but that is probably one of the biggest barriers when we look at uh, creating your own fitness regime is taking an inventory of what you're good at, what you're, in your case, as you've reflected in the chat, what you're horrible at. Um, but, but the reality is, is that, that you're in good company. Lots of people have a very similar experience with, with uh, being good at one element of our fitness regime and not all. So um, I'm just wondering, I'm making sure I didn't miss anything in here. Perfect. So another example might be somebody who tries to do several classes a week, say three classes a week, uh, and they are getting their cardio with a little bit of strength, uh, but recognizing that we're hoping to achieve a more balanced week with more than just cardio, more than just strength. We want to include flexibility. We want to include balance um, exercises. So core stability balance exercises. We want to include hydration and we certainly want to consider our sound nutrition to fuel us through all of that. Okay, so I'm just getting back to the slide here. Probably the most important piece right now for an exercise plan that is successful is that it should be something that you choose and enjoy. So it's your choice and you enjoy. And in the, in the military, often um, we're afforded these great opportunities with say like a unit PT, our unit loads on some physical training. And that for many of us is a great way to achieve some of our uh, workout regime, but the statistics in the industry would reveal that if it's something you enjoy and you had the choice in it, that you might see, in fact, uh, some more success with that. So I, I draw your attention to that consideration um, in the industry uh, that obviously we have to 
to consider what we have access to. We want to consider cross training, but we really do want to have some say in what that exercise looks like for us. And in some cases, if in fact the unit is providing some PT, that's awesome. You can supplement it with the things that you love to do. Okay, the next slide talks about strength training. So when we break down this element, you're going to see that we're talking about frequency, intensity, time, and type. And the recommendations from our governing body certainly suggest at least two times a week. Um, and your second said, if let's say, uh, and we were talking about various loads there in the chat, but let's say we decide on uh, two sets of 15 repetitions for various different muscle groups. The, the guideline, and, and this is a can be a very complex subject, but we're going to make this simple. Um, the, the guideline would be that, how do I know how much weight I should be lifting? Well, your second set should never be easy. Your first set of 15, you should be able to, to roll through. Um, but if the muscle is not being challenged, then one of two things, uh, you might have to add in some more sets and reps, or you might have to increase the weight, or you might have to change up um, the instability of the exercise to make it more challenging in, in a different way. So when we look at the time for strength training, uh, we again are following our guidelines from the Canadian Society of Exercise Phys, 30 minutes for each workout, two sets of repetitions. Again, it'll depend on what, and we're trying to keep it fairly simplified, um, but what you're trying to achieve. When we look at the principle of progression, this would be something for consideration. And you'll see the reference to the avoiding the principle of adaptation. Um, what our body likes to do is adapt to the overload or the workout, in this case, the extra weight that we are adding on through hand weights, barbells, whatever that is that we're using. Um, so it's really important to change up the options. Time and time again, you probably see that, that person at the gym um, who looks like they're doing the same workout that they did the last time you saw them at the gym. So that's something we want to avoid in keeping with this principle of adaptation. We want to avoid letting our body adapt to the same overload. And then the last square here on the slide just talks about the type. So when we look at strength training um, and the functional exercises that we hope you're including, we want to always work muscles in pairs. Um, and we want to absolutely consider how we are using those muscles in daily life. Um, the next slide talks about, again, a sample exercise plan. And in this case, it's leg work. So you're going to see um, those little graphics there, a little bit old fashioned, but they um, are licensed for me to use. So I wanted to include a visual. Um, so the sample exercise plan talks about squats or barbell or heavy hand weights and the options below. So you're going to see a sidestep up on a flat bench. A lot of people do have that at home, uh, but that doesn't have to be a bench that you would see at a gym. That could be the lower step of your front porch. Uh, that could be um, an area that, that you've set up with maybe like a plyo plyometric box or a, a small stable step that you could get up on, a Reebok step, or sorry, I just used a a brand name doesn't have to be Reebok. It can be anything. That's just what popped into my mind. Um, and then you'll also see the image of a half squat. So again, those could be hand weights. It doesn't have to be a barbell um, where you're following uh, the guideline of good posture uh, and you're just doing squats. Again, functional uh, capacity type exercises where you're mimicking how we use our leg muscles. Uh, so in this case, there's also an image of a forward lunge um, maintaining the proper body posture there, but again, mimicking how we use those muscles in daily life and training them in a way that's meaningful to not only maintain your fitness, to prevent injury, but also to improve your fitness. Okay, the next slide talks a little bit about, um, sorry, uh, upper body samplings and sorry, overall body sampling. So again, you're gonna see the exercise ball listed as options uh, instead of say a flat bench. Um, so chest, you're going to see there that there's some chest press, chest flies happening on an exercise ball. 
Um, we want to make sure that people realize, obviously, the proper setup, that your head, neck, and upper back is supported on the ball. But certainly, it's an unstable exercise, which now will recruit far more than just, the, in this case, the pectoral muscles. So you're going to recruit uh, the core, the glutes, the, the hamstrings, the quads. Everything will probably be firing to keep you from rolling off that ball. So these are just some of the sample things that we can be creative with our home gym setup if, in fact, we have access to an exercise ball. Uh, the upper back option is listed there, as is the lower back one, where you're just slowly bringing your body into neutral alignment from the forward flex position that you see at the bottom of this slide. So um, just a bit of food for thought. Uh, that really, um, without access to our gyms and selectorized equipment and plate loaded equipment, uh, that we can achieve a lot at home. And in some cases, we might even be working the muscle in a way that it's unaccustomed to because we've recruited some balanced muscles as we go through that. And absolutely, other benches are available. I just saw that in the chat. Perfect. Okay, so um, the next slide, moving through. Again, more sample exercise. I just wanted people to have a quick visual on um, using the ball. There's a picture of a gentleman using a piece of equipment called the preacher curl or preacher bench um, at the gym. Most gyms have that, but you can mimic that exact same exercise with just hand weights and an exercise ball. So you're getting your biceps in a way that... Uh, might be different uh, than say sitting on a, an exercise selectorized piece of equipment. Um, and certainly you could also do the standing and certainly um, uh, you could also be using another piece of equipment called a BOSU, which is sort of a half of an exercise ball. And you could be doing standing in on a BOSU creating some instability. So firing far more than just the biceps in that case. Um, the next, uh, picture actually shows the flat bench, but but certainly a tricep uh, could be done on the ball, and the same sort of um, um, movement pattern as what you're seeing there. So just a couple of visualizations for how uh, you don't need the heavy duty pieces of equipment in the case when you don't have access to it. That certainly at home with a few modifications and and smaller purchases could set yourself up for success. Uh, this slide also, again, gives us some sample abdominal uh, core workout approaches. And as you know, in the industry, uh, we're saying, and this is, this is uh, messaging from the CAF, uh, that we are recognizing that sit-ups are not ideal for abdominal strength enhancement. We, in fact, are proponents of the plank. And this just is another visual taken from our injury reduction portfolio uh, that shows you that we're no longer doing sit-ups as we once did, uh, but we are doing curl-ups, which is mimicking the way we get out of bed every morning by using our body weight, and in this case, our core strength uh, to lift us up in a way that is functional. And then there's a couple of visuals there on side bridges and the importance of uh, recognizing again, some core stability stuff that will, that will help us functionally and hopefully prevent injury. Um, uh, the next few slides, uh, as mentioned, are just some visuals. Um, we wanted to make sure that we remind you the stretching and flexibility piece. Um, again, part of our portfolio uh, that we can really decrease the injury potential if we include uh, the stretching and the flexibility and everything we do. And in some cases, um, somebody offered up a, a great point that we do have things that we're good at, like cardio might not be something that we put a ton of time into, but strength we are. This one as a component of fitness, the stretching and flexibility piece is probably right up there as one that people don't consider until they've had their first injury. So we are proponents of making sure that you're using proper body alignment. You're making sure you always stretch after your workout um, as that enhances your overall ability to be functional and also to stay functional. 
And then this slide reminds us that there are lots of fitness apps and we aren't proponents of any particular one. We obviously are really happy that we have dfit.ca. We have access to CAF Connection um, across the country, across the world. And on there, there are a lot of things that are free for the military member. You just have to put in your service number, uh, but certainly it is accessible to all and into our, to our um, military community as well. And on the DFIT application, as an example, there are yoga uh, workouts. There are all sorts of um, exercise circuits that you could follow. There's journaling options. Um, they've thought of everything. Uh, so I encourage you to check out dfit.ca, but also the virtual webinars. And I know everybody's had enough of, of virtual webinars. Um, but in this case, our organization has provided internationally um, access to certain classes that will probably always have a shelf life on our many different sites uh, that are available to the CAF community. And then strategies for action. So uh, we absolutely, when we're looking at the flexibility stretching piece and injury reduction, most of them are preventable, prevented, preventable to these injuries. Um, we are absolute proponents of the strategy of training that includes consistency and variety and progression and moderation and SMART goals and, and taking a look at the FIT principle. So there's a lot of things to consider there. Um, and we're also, when you look at that principle of progression and the SMART goal combined, we also don't want people to think that they have to change everything they're doing. Any opportunity for health education is just an opportunity to take inventory on what you currently are doing and what maybe you wanna try more or less of. And in some cases, it might just be purchasing a $10 pair of hand weights and incorporating light um, muscular recruitment exercises while you're doing something else, uh, maybe while you're watching TV or maybe while you're having a break in the evening or maybe you just slowly include it into your morning regime. Um, we're not looking at people waking up tomorrow and applying all of these principles and, and radically changing what they're doing. We're hoping people will just be inspired to try something different. The equipment piece, we want to reduce the risk with proper use. So we see a lot of people misuse equipment. So again, they may buy a set of hand weights that's just too, too high of, a, of an increment to start with. So we follow that principle of progression and making sure um, that we're being smart with the, the equipment that we are purchasing as it pertains to who's using it. So for example, you have two partners in a household that are wanting to train um, often, you know, one person may say, well, I want to buy the 20 pound weights. And the other person might say, well, hang on a second. Um, I, I think I'd like to start with the five pound. So there would be a bit of a conundrum because it will be specific to an individual. Uh, and for, in some cases, the 20 pounds might be too much for one person to, uh, enter or re-enter their fitness regime. So that might be something to consider. And then the last uh, square on this slide talks about nutrition. We really do look at uh, nutrition, food as fuel. Um, so we want to eat food first, obviously, uh, to maximize our performance, but also to enhance our recovery. And we leave the specialist the dietitians uh, to this messaging and who does it better than Health Canada and the dietitians provided to us through the Campus Food Guide and the messaging you find there. Um, Last couple of slides, this one reminds us the, the importance of minimizing our risk for injury. So you will see that on the, on the green side, the go side, the yes, we want to get rid of any painful exercise. We want to adjust our daily habits and we want to be able to maintain the fundamentals of our mobility and our stability. Um, if you have an asymmetry, so let's say there's something uh, you know, your right side isn't working as well as your left, or you've got a bit of a right ankle issue. Um, if there is an issue where you have an asymmetrical concern, we obviously encourage you to get to a practitioner to figure out what that's about uh, and making sure that you address those issues, those intricacies as they may uh, impair your performance. 
The protective equipment piece, really important. So making sure that if you're cycling, you're wearing a helmet. If you're you're running, you're wearing proper shoes. If you're running in uh, inclement weather, that you're dressing appropriately for appropriately for the temperature. Um, all of those things will help as we consider the risk of injury during our fitness regimes. Alignment's really important. Um, we're not gonna spend a ton of time here, but just a reminder um, that neutral spine is what we are aspiring to achieve. And obviously we have three natural curves in the back. The visual is there. We've got the cervical, thoracic, and lumbar. Um, any exercise you're doing, your posture muscles uh, and your paraspinal muscles uh, are, are muscles that you should pay attention to. And um, it you know plagues our population, back issues plague our, our population and so much of it can be prevented. So I encourage you to always monitor your alignment of the spine um, to prevent your injury potential. This slide reminds us of mobility, stability and pain. And, um, and recognizing the importance of that joint by joint approach when we look at our exercises. Obviously, if we feel pain, that's not a good thing. If we feel soreness and it's on the right and left side of our body, so we have some symmetry with the pain, that could be as a result of a great workout. If the pain persists, obviously, then you would evaluate whether or not you think you need to get to a practitioner because it might be an injury or it might just be a byproduct of your workout. And recognizing when to seek consultation. So any persistent, persistent symptom, absolutely we want to recognize the importance of, of following up on that. And this slide reminds us the importance of the square here, the stability mobility piece. Obviously we're gonna consider in our fitness regime, power, strength, functional patterning, um, and certainly our alignment but we really want to pay attention to stability and mobility because that's what's going to keep us moving. And this slide reminds us of what can be done. So we want to pay attention to our body, listen for warning signs. Uh, we want to seek out the knowledge. Today's a little bit about knowledge that hopefully you can uh, take something away from the information shared. Change, modify uh, if something doesn't feel right for you and, and certainly create a plan, do some research, figure out what you might like to place some emphasis on. And one of the last concepts is the motivation piece. So really important that we recognize intrinsic motivation, that internal motivation is going to be really important. There's a ton of extrinsic motivation. Every commercial on TV provides an external motivation for something. Um, most people will see a lot of success when they tap into that internal condition that helps give you the direction and the goal-oriented behaviors will help you with your success. And of course, we're proponents of journaling. So maybe over the next 30 days, take some time to focus on your successes, reflect on your goals, take a look at how you're feeling, any gains that you may have been experiencing, like are you upping your steps? Are you trying cardio a little bit more? Um, are you increasing your sets or reps for strength training? Are you including strength training where that's something you didn't typically do? So journaling allows you a picture or a snapshot of, of the success that you're seeing, and we encourage you to try that. Now at this point, um, oh yeah, don't forget to drink water. You'll see that last little nudge there. Um, but at this point, um, I would welcome any questions that you may have. Uh, please use the chat or turn off your microphone, whatever your, or turn on your microphone, whatever your comfort level is. Um, as I'm just waiting for that to uh, round out, um, I'd like to take the opportunity to thank you for joining. I know that's a lot of information from a lot of really great portfolios within the Strengthening the Forces content. Um, the really great news is that most of us probably know a lot of this information and sometimes when health education occurs, it just presents us the opportunity to remind ourselves of the areas that Everybody has some area that could, they could place more emphasis on. So I encourage you just to take stock of what you are doing, recognizing that although there's lots of barriers to fitness, 
Having access to a gym doesn't have to be a barrier. It might be an opportunity to try something different and to try something maybe even just from the comfort of your home or using the trails and the resources close to you, wherever it is that you live. Um, and I wish you all the success with that. Uh, just turning to the chat. Uh,